Hey guys, what is up? It is Destiny and I'm here again with another video. So for this video, I'm gonna be discussing my experience taking the SPI exam, as well as some tips and advice I have for studying for the SPI. So if you like to hear about those things, stay tuned. So I recently just took my SPI exam and if you don't know what the SPI exam is, the SPI is the Sonography Principles and Instrumentations exam. And it's one of the exams that you have to take become register, a registered sonographer. And it'll probably be like the first exam that you take. So basically to um, be able to take this exam, you have to pass your physics courses in ultrasound school. So I was done with my physics course in May of this year. So May, 2022, that's when I was done with my physics classes. And the way that my program is set up, we take um, two semesters of physics. Basically, we split the book up in half. We go over one half one semester and then we finish the other half the next semester. So I finished physics in May. So once you're finished with physics, you are able to take the exam. Um, I didn't take it right away. They tell you to take it right away, but I just took it, let's see. I took it three months after I finished the exam just because I was in classes this entire summer and I was in clinic and I was working. So I really didn't have a lot of time to set aside for physics, but I did tell myself that in August, that's when I had a little bit more time. That was when I was gonna take my exam. So I basically set my exam up to take it on August 18th. I had like paid for my exam and everything in the beginning of August because I told myself if I do not pay for this exam, set it up, I am not gonna study, study it. And I really did want to be able to take this exam this summer because I just wanted to get it out the way with and not really have to worry about physics anymore. So I set my exam around the beginning of August. So that gave me roughly around three-ish weeks to study. So I took my test on August 18th and drum roll please I actually passed it on the first time so I was very excited about that. I forgot to mention this in my video but to pass the SPI you have to have a 555 or higher and with the SPI you can score between 300 being the lowest and 700 which is the highest because I definitely put in a lot of time and energy um, studying for physics but I will get into that later on in this video so when it came to actually taking the SPI, um, you can take it one of two ways. You can either go to a testing center or you can take it online at home. I just decided to play it safe and take it at a testing center. And so I had set my exam up for 8 a.m. and they tell you to get there 30 minutes early. So I had got to the exam place around 7.30. And when I got there, um, you know, they asked me for my name you know, what exam I was taking. I had to give the people my ID. Um, they gave me like a sheet with like rules and everything and violations and stuff like that. And then also they had to scan my palm, took a picture of me. I had to take off any bracelets that I have. Like they were serious about that. I had to put everything in the locker, turn my phone off. So basically the pro like when you go to that testing center, they are gonna make sure you don't have anything on you. And if you do, they are gonna kick you out. But I didn't get kicked out, so it's okay. So basically they did all of that. And right before I could like go into the actual testing area, they did another check. So they made sure I didn't have any bracelets on. I had to end up lifting my hair up to make sure I didn't have anything behind my ears or anything like that. Um, I had to take my glasses off and to make sure there was like no cameras or nothing and that these people were very serious. Also at the time I had a hoodie on when I was taking my exam and they made me um, pull my sleeves up to make sure I didn't have anything you know, on my arms or anything like that. They're just making sure you're not cheating and that you don't um, like have anything on you or stuff like that. So basically once that process was done, I was able to take my test. And for the SPI, you have two hours to take the exam. And I don't know if everybody has the same amount of questions, um, but I had 108 questions. And that time goes by super duper quick when you're taking the SPI. Like when I had like went through my questions the second time, um, I literally only had like 15, 18 minutes left. So I took like, when you're taking that exam, take your time, but don't take your time because that time goes by pretty quickly. But when I was actually taking the exam, it was not that hard. Like, I mean, it was hard, but it wasn't. And some of the questions, I was very surprised because I was like, is this question really up here? Like some of the questions I was second guessing myself because they were 
easy. But I was like, nope, Destiny, you know the answer. That's the answer. So go ahead and click it and move on to the next question. And when I was taking that exam, if I didn't know the answer to a question, I literally would just skip it and just come back when um, I was done going through all the questions. Like I remember um, I literally skipped the first couple of questions because I was like, what is this? I really don't remember it. But as you're taking that test and like you skip questions and stuff like that and you're answering other questions, you're gonna, it's gonna come back. You're gonna remember some stuff. So like, don't freak out if you don't know it the first time because chances are when you go back the second time, you're gonna remember it. So on my test, um, I had a lot of Doppler up there, a lot of questions about resolutions, artifact. Um, I had some questions about quality assurance and gold standards. Um, so basically a lot of my tests was on Doppler and when I was, um, studying actually, and hold up, let me pull this up on my iPad. Um, the ARDMS actually has an outline on their website, which basically tells you how much of a section is on the actual SPI. So basically there's this outline up here. So basically the ARDMS, the SPI outline, or when you're taking the SPI, basically there's five areas that it's gonna cover. So the first area is clinical safety, patient care and quality assurance, which is 10%, physical principles, which is 15%, ultrasound transducers, which is 16%, Imaging principles and instrumentation, which is 28%. And then you have Doppler imaging concepts, which is at 31%. So when I was taking my exam, there was a lot of Doppler up there. Um, resolutions, artifacts, like I had said. I had a couple transducer questions, but not a whole bunch. But everybody's tests vary. So really, you can't really base my test on how yours is going to be. But trust and believe there's going to be a lot of Doppler on your test. So make sure you really understand Doppler because Doppler is 31% of your test. So my test, it, it wasn't that bad. Um, some questions I was like, I really don't know this. And um, I had skipped it but you know once I was done taking the test and had submitted it and everything you know I I had to raise my hand when I was done with my test because there's like a lot of things that they want you to do when you're taking this test and I was like I don't want to take no chances and get kicked out so basically um, I was done taking my test I gave them back the locker key they checked my ID again I had to scan my palm and then I was out the door and also an another thing that actually surprised me was I didn't get my test results right away and you know prior to me even taking the SPI I had watched a lot of videos on YouTube and a lot of people said that they had got their results right away that did not happen in my case and I remember I had asked like the lady at the desk that I get my um results or anything and she had said something but I kind of forgot it um, but basically I didn't get my results right away so I was literally driving home and I was like oh my gosh like did I pass did I not pass but like when I was driving home I felt really good about that test like you know when you take a test and you feel like good and confident about it that's really how I felt with the SPI because some of those questions that I knew I like flew by them but um yes yeah, so I was really nervous and so when I got back home I was eating breakfast and then I was checking my email and I got an email with my score report and I was like oh my gosh this is it this is the moment where I find out if I passed or not so you know I'm logging into my account and I clicked on the link and it said passed and y'all when I tell y'all I literally cried tears of joy because the process of studying for this test I don't want to have to go through that again but I know I'm gonna have to go through it in the future but it was a lot because I was I was very tired and burnt out this summer because of clinical and classes and working and just the fact that I was able to push through study for this SPI and pass it the first time I was just so proud of myself because passing this exam was the highlight of my summer like I was like even though I didn't really get to enjoy myself this summer being able to pass this SPI, I will be able to have a weight lifted off my shoulders because physics, y'all, I, mm, physics, mm, no words about it. No words about it. But I was just so proud of myself because, you know, this summer, I felt like my summer was robbed, but, you know, being able to pass my SPI kind of made up for that. But enough of like my experience actually taking the exam. Let's get into what I actually did to actually pass it on the first time. So, I used a couple of things um, when I was studying. So the first thing that I used when I was studying for the SPI was this Understanding Ultrasound Physics textbook by Sydney K. Edelman. And really y'all, this textbook is really the only thing that you need to take your SPI. 
I read this um, textbook from front to back. I read chapters one through 24, word for word, and I did the review question. So I did a lot for this textbook. And when I was like reading and everything, all the chapters and everything, I will highlight the bolded stuff. You know, I would, I would pay attention to like the charts and everything. And I was making sure I understood the relationships between different factors and everything, because if you're able to understand those relationships, then um, you'll be able to answer questions on the SPI because the SPI isn't going to ask you, what is this? They're basically going to ask you a questions in a way that's going to like require you to think like, I know I had a question about like a Doppler shift and frequency or something like that. And I think it was like, does it increase or decrease? And I, I'm, I think the answer was increased because I know frequency and Doppler shift have a direct relationship. So as one goes up, the other one is going to go up. So basically they're going to ask you questions like that. So basically, you know, I was just highlighting things in my textbook, writing a little bit of notes here on the side. And when I was going through the textbook, um, you know, I would read a section in my brain and then I would read the section again, but I would read it out loud and highlight the stuff as I was reading through it. And that really helped me a lot. And then after reading every chapter, I would do the review questions after every chapter. And those helped a lot. And honestly, y'all, the review questions in Edelman are actually a little bit harder than the questions on the SPI. So if you're able to answer these Edelman questions in the book, you should be fine with the SPI because some of those questions on the SPI, I was like, this is really easy. Like some of those questions, I was like, this question is so easy. Why is this even on this exam? So basically, if you read this book and do the review questions, you should be good to go. Some other things that I used to study for the SPI were flashcards. So when I was doing like my physics courses and everything, um, I was doing flashcards then. So when I was studying for my SPI, I really didn't have to do flashcards. But basically, these are all the flashcards that I had used um, to study for my physics board exam. And my flashcards are based on the Edelman textbook. So basically, when I study, I like to remember like information in a different way. Like reading the textbook is a way to remember information. Flashcards is a way to remember it. So I basically, I like to remember information in different ways, if that makes sense. And I really like flashcards because, you know, I don't know, I just really like flashcards. But basically these are all the flashcards that I went through and for flashcards, um, when I was studying, I would study the flashcards after I would go through the chapter. So for example, if I went over chapter 18, I would read the chapter, do the review questions, and then I will find, oh, here's my chapter 18 um, flashcards. And I will go over the flashcards maybe two to three times, and then I will just move on to the next chapter. And, you know, I would know I was good um, with the flashcards if um, I would go straight through them and not get anything wrong. And when I was going through the flashcards, I would have two separate piles. The first pile would be the flashcards that I would get right, and the second pile would be the ones that I would get wrong. And you know, after I was done going through all the flashcards, I would go through the ones that I got wrong again, make sure I could go through those. Then I would shuffle all my flashcards together again, and then go through all the flashcards and make sure I could get all of them correct. So that's how I went through my flashcards. And hey, I was able to pass the exam. So definitely I suggest flashcards if that's your way of learning. If not Quizlet, but I mean, everybody's way of studying and learning is different, but that's just how I do it. And the last resource that I used to study for the SPI was this YouTube channel and it was called Ultrasound Board Review. And basically this guy, um, he makes SPI review questions. And when I tell y'all those questions, his channel literally is a lifesaver because the way that his questions are formatted are literally how the questions are on the SPI. And the guy, he gives you like enough time to like answer the question, like he'll read the question, read the answers and then he'll like pause for a bit and give you time to answer it and then he'll even sometimes explain like why that answer is the answer so um his channel was very beneficial like i really felt like it prepared me for the spi a lot and i'll even leave his channel like in the description box below or whatever but basically his channel was the bomb.com because I felt like I really learned a lot when I was going through those videos and he has like over 20 something videos. I went through every single one of them and I'm glad I did. So if you're studying for your SPI, definitely check out his channel because his questions are basically set up like the SPI. So 
his channel was really good and also some other resources i didn't use these but i've like heard about them um oh also y'all i forgot there was another textbook that i had used to study for my spi um it was the examination review for ultrasound sonographic principles and instrumentations by penny so basically i used this textbook a little bit so one of my classes over the summer it was physics review and it was for the first six weeks so basically we will read like a chapter and then we have to make questions like that and the penny book is basically like a condensed version of edelman so if you don't want to have to go through that edelman book i would just go through the penny book because i thought that book was like good as well and it's not as long so that was something else that i had used to study but some other resources that i know people have used is ultrasound registry review honestly i didn't like ultrasound registry review just because i mean i know some people like it but i just felt like the questions made me second guess myself like i feel like for the most part i understand ultrasound physics but some of them questions i didn't like how they were worded and it would like kind of trip me up a bit but i mean some people like harder questions because it helps them like answer easier questions but i was like i'm kind of on a time crunch right now and i don't know if i had mentioned this um earlier but i literally only studied for my spi for a little over a week do i recommend that absolutely not i had a lot going on this summer with school and everything so my time was very limited but you know i guess that pressure kind of helped me a little bit because like it made me force myself to study like i was studying for about five to six hours a day of course i was taking breaks in between but it was a lot of information that i was taking in every day and um definitely it's doable but if you can give yourself enough time to study give yourself enough time to study because i was very stressed studying for my spi but i made it and that's really all that matters and i passed it but um yeah i hope you guys really enjoyed this video um if you have like any questions or anything about the spi and i didn't answer them in this video just leave a comment down below and i'll make sure to get to it as fast as i can so with that being said i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please make sure you like comment and subscribe for more content and i'll be back with another video very soon bye y'all